This video is about the Public Key Infrastructure, or PKI for short. Imagine Alice wants to visit Bob's webpage. Alice reaches out to Bob, and they exchange keys. Then Bob can authenticate the content of his webpage by adding a message authentication code, or digital signature. This seems fine at first sight, however, how can Alice trust that the keys that were used really belong to Bob? What if Alice had been talking to Mallory all along, who sent out their public key, and their version of the website instead? One way of solving this problem is for Alice to physically meet Bob and verify that the key she received matches the one Bob shows her in person. Messengers like Signal and Threema offer this option. However this is clearly not feasible for every website Alice visits, and thus trust must be established differently. William Shakespeare once said, love all, trust a few. In accordance with this quote, public key infrastructure initially only puts its trust in a few entities. However, in PKI, trust is transferred transitively in a hierarchy. The idea is that by trusting a few entities, we can trust many. For instance, Alice might trust Dory, who knows and trusts Bob. Thus Alice will assume that she can trust Bob as well, and will accept Bob's public key. In practice, every participant trusts at least one so-called Certificate Authority, or CA for short. The public key of the Certificate Authority is directly stored in the hardware device, operating system, or browser when shipped by the respective vendor. Then, companies and people such as Bob can register themselves with a Certificate Authority. After verifying Bob's identity, the Certificate Authority will vouch that Bob's identity matches Bob's public key by issuing a certificate. This can be done for a real-world person, a physical address or a URL. Then Alice accepts Bob's webpage only if Bob appends a certificate. Note that certificate authorities can also delegate trust to intermediate certificate authorities, who are allowed to issue certificates themselves. This creates a hierarchy of trust, with the root CA being the one stored in the user's devices. Of course, if a certificate authority is compromised by a malicious actor, they could sign bogus certificates, and successfully impersonate Bob. The consequence of such an attack can be diminished by adding the possibility of revoking certificates from a given CA. Another mitigation is to shorten the expiry times of certificates. Another issue arises if Alice's device is compromised, and the root certificate is changed. This attack would completely break her public key infrastructure. Free certificate authorities exist. So if you want to set up your own web page, you can get your own certificate. Let's go back to our initial example and see how the PKI uses the different cryptographic primitives to ensure secure communication. First Alice requests a connection to Bob. Bob replies with his certificate confirming that the public key matches his identity. After verifying the certificate's validity using the public key infrastructure, Alice and Bob can use public key cryptography to exchange a shared secret key. Finally using efficient symmetric encryption and message authentication codes, a communication channel between Alice and Bob is established that satisfies confidentiality, integrity and authenticity. The protocol we just described essentially corresponds to the TLS protocol, which is widely used today. When the HTTP protocol is combined with TLS, it is then called HTTPS. When browsing, Alice can ensure that a secure connection was established by the presence of the lock symbol next to the address bar in her browser. In this video, we have seen how trust can efficiently be transferred across the internet. Thanks for watching this video.